What's up, my comic comrades? It's no secret that Batman has had some dark and gritty stories in his 80 plus so year history. And some and of them are stories. considered among the greatest Batman stories ever written. Some but Batman having darker stories, stories shouldn't general. be a surprise to anyone because he's a character with a darker edge. Batman often says himself, he is the knight, meaning he sees the worst Gotham City has to offer. To However, there are a handful, even among those classics, that are so heavy in tone and content that Hollywood will probably never touch them in live action form. The irony is, is those stories would probably do the best. Depends on certain factors of their involved. I don't know these stories. I shouldn't have spoken so soon. Because they'd just be too brutal, controversial, or dark for their target audience. Depends. I mean, we all know Warner Brothers needs that PG-13 rating to get as many butts in theaters as possible. Either way, those untouchable best. Batman stories are the ones we're focusing on today. We're going to tell you which ones fall into that category and why. So let's get this started and we're kicking things off with Batman Death of the Family. Batman yeah, Death of the this. Family deals don't with don't Joker this. having cut off his face and wearing the skin of his face like a mask, all leather face oh, style. Okay. He then captures that's, that's, Batman and Batman issues. 14 of his new 52 run and the joker tells Still batman i know so who much. you are under the mask the same thing for all your little sidekicks your bat family the point joker is trying to make to batman in this story is that the bat family makes me. batman weak and that the joker makes him stronger through his challenges so joker sets out to eliminate the bat family saying it will make batman better not having them pulling him down the story then follows an insane psychological horror plot that would never be greenlit by a studio first and foremost the joker Why cuts not? off his this face and wears it as a mask it so straight up only stays on with the leather belt he attached along with crude staples and wire it's pretty worse. disgusting and terrifying the reason joker did this Solberg? is to show batman Batman that beneath his grin, it's just more grin, and that beneath Batman's mask is something snouted and fanged. Trying to make the point that he's Joker through and through, and Batman is Batman through and through. However, it doesn't end there. You see, he even captures the entire Bat family of Dick, Tim, Jason, Barbara, and Damien, That's and cuts off all their party. faces. Joker captured them and sedated them, and when they all woke up at a dinner table, they see they have bandages wrapped around their faces and heads, only for fake. Joker to reveal their faces have been cut off like his and put on ice on a plate in front of them. Fake. It's absolutely crazy. And he did this to show Batman that under their faces is just soft, tender stuff. But under Joker and Batman's is just more of them. In short, Joker that went to this extreme be, measure to say, be, hey, they wear a fake. mask and Funny when they words. take it off, they're no longer that person. But we stay the same with or without the masks. Now, shortly after this, we learned that the Joker cutting off the Bat family's faces was just a twisted joke to make yeah, his point course, and he didn't yeah. really take off their faces. But nonetheless, the imagery and psychological horror That's was insane. I'm pretty sure you could all see why there's no way in hell this would- I'm sorry, no, 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 I totally disagree. This, I could totally see it on big screen, and it would be wild, but that's not as bad as you try to make it out as being. No, this could totally be a movie. I, this could totally happen. Ever get made into a live action this Batman totally movie. It's like Batman action. meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre no, meets I'm Seven. Sorry, Don't get totally me wrong, I'd action. love to see the story in live action, but it would have to be done right. No playing games with the classic story of this type. And it's don't even act like you don't know what I'm talking about. All right, another no-go Batman story Wait, for the live action box office would be Batman the Killing Joke. Now this story did get adapted for a home video animated release back in 2016, but it wasn't received very well due to the fact that it wasn't that good. Somehow they didn't get one of the most loved Batman stories right with Kevin Conroy this and Mark like Hamill reprising their roles as like Batman action. and the Joker. But nonetheless, we aren't talking about home video movies. We're talking live action, theatrical. And let me tell you something. There ain't no way a live action Killing Joke movie would ever get made because it would have to be a hard rated R. I'm sure many of you know, but if you don't know, the Killing Joke revolves around the Joker trying to make the point to Batman that anyone could be turned bad or go crazy from just one bad day. You see, the story is famously known for a few Things, Joker's but one of the main door. things is it gives us the possible origin for the man that would become the Joker. Okay. And in that origin, okay. we see that the Joker went bad from one bad day after his pregnant wife died and a robbery went wrong. This all leads to him falling into a vat of chemicals and turning the him into the clown chemicals. prince of crime. Now that's all shown to us in flashbacks, but in the Still present, Joker decides to things. prove to Batman that even Gotham's best can go mad with one bad day like the one he had many years ago. That's he demonstrates this by going to Gordon's apartment, Joker. knocking on the door, and when Barbara opens it, he he shoots her in the spine, paralyzing her. Then when Gordon goes to oh, check on his daughter and attack the Joker, overwatch. he's knocked out by the Joker's goons. It's then implied that Joker sexually assaults Barbara. When she asks, why are you doing this? He says, while taking off her shirt, to prove a point, here's to crime. So that alone is inc- Okay, nope, you told the right, you told the right. Nope, no, that is, those are, that's the type of factors where I would agree, yep. Saying that I could see it happen, if DC wanted to the mature route, 
depends on how James Gunn is gonna do it. It's it's it would it's a very hard that one that's that one's much more complicated because we've seen there have been worse movies where weird and horrible shit happens and if and in a story like this where it makes sense where it's a it's a it's a well written fully fleshed out story not not doing it just for the shock factor of it it would make sense it's very complicated and it would need to fit the whole overarching team of DC, especially now where it is. It would be very complicated, not impossible. It would be very hard. I doubt they would want to take it. Incredibly risk. heavy and dark, but somehow it gets worse. No. We later see Joker has kidnapped Gordon, stripped him naked, and restrained him to a carnival dark ride where he forces him to stare at naked pictures of his daughter Barbara that Joker put all over inside the ride while Joker says, don't get even, get mad. It is so insanely graphic and okay. to this day yeah. remains one of the Never darkest mind. moments in comics. Never mind. Stripping a father naked, forcing him to Never look mind. at pictures of his wounded naked daughter, all to prove to Batman that even Never the mind. best can go mad with one bad day. It ultimately doesn't work Never and mind. even after all that, when Batman frees Gordon, he tells Batman, I want him brought in and I want him brought in by the book. That's Following up saying, Gordon's by the, the book, you hear me? We have to show him that our way works, which is a true statement to Gordon as a character. But nonetheless, the extremely heavy nature of the story, specifically what Joker does to Gordon and Barbara, almost guarantees we will never see Okay, now I understand why he says never. I tend to agree. That would be that. That what that took the level from to a seven to a twelve. That that's so much. But it shows Jim Gordon being the goat. He is one of the greats. One of the freaking greats. See this adapted live action. Although, if done right, it would be one hell of a Batman movie. That's the point. Stop. That's the point. Stop making me go back on my own words. It needs to be done right. Nothing is impossible because I, oh, I keep repeating myself. There's so many weird shit out there. It could be done. You need to be very delicate. But Joker also, it's a bit of a hypocrite. Like, everybody could become me with one bad day. But you're forcing that bad day to happen. Most people are just have bad days because incidents or coincidences happen. You paralyzed a woman, assaulted her, stripped down her naked, father naked, and made her watch pictures of her daughter naked. That sentence is insane. That's not a bad day that happens to everyone every other day. That would we would live in a world of jokers. Next up, we have what Batman Bloodstorm. This? this is a Batman Elseworld story that imagines okay, Batman words. as a vampire. You see, oh, after okay. defeating Dracula and Batman and Dracula Red Rain, Batman became a vampire he himself and Dracula. is now struggling with his newfound bloodlust. But even so, Batman continues his war on crime as a vampire Batman going after a gang of vampires easy. led by the Joker because of course. Now, the reason Joker we will never see this movie That's is horrible. because like all the stories we're mentioning, they are way too rated R and Batman Bloodstorm storm is crazy but we are living in a world now where superhero movies have proven that could be rated r both dc and marvel have done it on the first few pages of the comic we but also it's a batman else world vampire movie that's uh, that would be a bigger reason why it wouldn't happen see Batman put a stake right through the chest of a butt naked female vampire. Blood that's and nudity not, all at the same time. This story bad. is filled with that that's and we see bad. dismembered bodies left and not right. Bad. It's one of the most graphic Batman stories. To push that point even further, we see a vampire bite an entire dude's face off. It's a Batman story not for the faint of heart. The it's not bad though. This is not bad. They do rated R and they do it fully. You just don't attract the younger audience, you attract the mature audience. People that grew up on Christian Bale and Christopher Nolan as Batman, the greatest Batman movies. The mature, grounded stories. They all just attract a different audience, but it's still too super successful. Look at what Joker did. The story is also very risque and graphic, not for children in the least, no, but that's how a vampire no, story done right should be, as the subject matter was never yes. intended for children. The story even ends on a downer with Batman leaving a note for Alfred and Gordon to kill him in his sleep as he can no longer live as a bloodthirsty vampire. Point is, as unfortunate as it may be, Batman Warner Brothers will never make a rated R Batman vampire Batman movie. Next up, we have Batman Night Cries. Now, this is one of the most mature Batman stories in the sense that it deals with this. very dark themes of child abuse and how 
it impacts society. The story follows oh, wow. Batman as he investigates several child abuse cases within Gotham City. As Batman digs deeper and deeper into the investigation, he encounters Damn. several suspects diving into the horrible nature of abuse and its psychological effects on its victims. Again, the story deals with abuse of children, death of children, and real world issues that are horrible. Not like super villains and fantastical things, no. What? Things our society actually deals with. The story has the weight and darkness of movies like Seven, wow. making it extremely heavy and rough to get through. A great story, but one that'll never get adapted. I keep disagreeing with you, my friend. This is, you explained the reason why it would be a great movie if done right. It, it needs to be handled by professionals written, have a great script, and tackle these delicate themes with the respect they deserve. But if done right, it, it would make a masterpiece of a message of delivering an impactful message about real world issues that would be done in a project that would be watched globally by everyone. Oh, I disagree with most of what you're saying through this video for the big screen because of its context. Next up, we have a Batman story I know all of you are waiting for me to mention, and it's a no-brainer, and that is Arkham Asylum, a serious house on serious I Earth. Just looking this. at the artwork for the this artwork story, you can tell horrifying. how abstract and serious in tone it's going to be. This is highly regarded as one of the best Batman stories ever made, and that's because of how much it dives into the psyche of Batman and that's his villains cool. trapped within Arkham Asylum. That's it's drawn cool. hauntingly by Dave McKean, which really sets the atmosphere this for the intense story, is which is told by the great Grant Morrison. The story takes place in Arkham Red Asylum, Morrison, as you would assume, oh, Gotham's infamous psychiatric hospital for the, the criminally goats. insane. Anyway, on April Fool's Day, the inmates led by the Joker, of course, take over the asylum, taking the staff hostage. They then demand Batman to come to the asylum, threatening to kill the hostages if the Dark Knight doesn't comply. Batman obviously agrees and enters essentially a haunted house where he is subjected to a nightmare journey of the psychopaths that are the inmates of Arkham. We see him come face to face with several of his iconic that villains like Clayface, insane. Mad Hatter, and Two-Face as he's forced to confront his own fears and doubts about his sanity and the nature of the crime-fighting crusade he's taken up. This that story is straight like up a Batman horror story, meaning it would have to be a rated R Batman. I'm not sure if it's horror. I think it's psychological action movie sounds like. It would be awesome. That's, this is probably the most tame one out of, of the all. A two-hour psychological action movie into the psyche of Batman. That, that would need... Oh, that would be cool movie. That's how you would have to adapt it if you want it to stay true. The story is a psychological horror, very ominous and mature. It really breaks down the psyche of several of Batman's villains, like the Mad Hatter, Joker, and more, seeing so what makes them tick and why they really are so terrifying. To be honest, I'm not even sure if they wanted to, they could capture what this book was able to pull off. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure if they wanted to, they could come close, but some stories are just better expressed in different mediums of art, and this one is very driven by the illustrations and the atmosphere. Not all stories told through comics can try translate 100% to That's film. Fair, Nonetheless, so. this is probably a Batman story Warner Brothers will never touch. And finally, a story I don't think they'll ever adapt is the Flashpoint Batman and Joker storyline. Not necessarily the whole Flash creating the Flashpoint, Flashpoint universe and then when he goes back to his universe, it's the beginning of the New 52 with him creating an entirely new timeline. That was sort of kind of loosely done in the solo oh, Flash God, movie, even though it was there. so loosely done, don't I feel like James Gunn could do it there. the right way for his rebooted no. universe. But I'm talking about the Thomas Wayne Batman and Martha Wayne Joker story Aww. from the three issue miniseries. This was an amazing story that showed us in the Flashpoint timeline, Bruce's parents became Batman so and the shows, Joker. His dad, Batman, his mom, the Joker. That is so interesting. No, I w this is something I wish Zack Snyder's DC. I wish we could have seen more of the, his Thomas and Martha Wayne in a Flashpoint because, oh, God, no, I want this. This is something I would want in an Elseworlds movie. After Bruce was killed in the Flashpoint universe, it caused his mother to go crazy, oh, ultimately turning so into the Joker and his dad swearing a life of fighting crime becoming Batman. In I issue three of Flashpoint Batman, Batman, Batman Night of Vengeance, we learn how Martha slowly turned into the Joker. You see, like so I briefly intriguing. said, months after Bruce's death, we learn that Martha isn't able to get over the death of Bruce. With Thomas saying, he's gone. You have to accept that. And I miss him too, along with your smile. But the word smile creepily perks Martha up and she says, what Thomas? After this, we see Thomas track down Joe Chill and beat him to death in an alley. He then returns home to Wayne Manor saying, Martha, he's dead. Martha then says, I understand Thomas. See, as she turns around saying, I'm smiling. As we see, she puts slits in her cheeks, all Heath Ledger Joker style. At this point, Thomas has his wife taken away as she's clearly lost her mind and gone full crazy as we see her laughing hysterically turning into this world's Joker. So does this tell us that the Joker is right? It really takes 
just one bad day for someone to go mad? In Martha's case, I suppose. But, but of course she would expect bad days. That's why I keep disagreeing with that statement. Not everyone, thankfully, loses their child. That would be a horrible world. Those, those would be horrible days. Escape and become the clown prince of crime, which would all lead to a final confrontation with Batman and her. A brutal one where Batman is able to grab her saying, what if I told you there was a world where our son lives? I have an opportunity to make that real, to rewrite history. And as twisted as it sounds, I need to know from you, Martha. Should I? She starts crying, saying, promise me you will. He says, I do. She then says, tell me about Bruce. What does he do after we're dead? He says he follows in his father's footsteps. She asks, he's a doctor? He says, <laughs> no. no. She then says, oh God, as she starts running off, saying, no, stay away from me. But she ultimately falls down a cavern and dies. So the thought of her son becoming Batman ultimately killed her as we see her laying there broken with blood coming out of her mouth. Now, now th James Gunn needs to do this. James Gunn needs to do this. This would be like a spin-off from a Flashpoint movie, which would be done right by James Gunn. He needs to do this. is so captivating and intriguing. This one we put on here because we don't think they'll ever make it because of the graphic nature of it. As within the story, you see Jim Gordon's throat gets slit by the Joker, and you see Harvey Dent's little daughter killed in a horrific way. The overall themes okay, are just extremely nice. dark and mature. However, I do think out of all the stories mentioned today, this would be the one most likely to get adapted and probably just be tamed this down a bit, so which I would cool. love to see because this Elseworlds alternate reality is fantastic. I really dig the dynamic of Bruce's dad being Batman and his mom being the Joker, and the way the story was done by Brian Azzarello was brilliant. In any case, friends, those are a handful of Batman stories we think Hollywood would never turn into a live action film. There are several more, so let us know what your list- No, sorry, my friend, I disagree. I think all of those movies could get made. All of them could get made, and would be amazing. All of them.